What's up, fam? That's Manny's thing, huh? <laughs> well, what's up, guys? How we doing tonight? Doing good? Doing good? Come on. Come on. Well, guys, I'm super excited to be speaking with y'all again tonight. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Jake. I'm the resident here with you guys for a short time. I get to learn from a great team and then spend time getting to know you guys. Guys, it has been so much fun getting to know names, faces, what y'all do, what y'all like to do, sports, robotics, engineering, whatever it is. It's been a lot of fun. It's been really cool. So I want you guys to give yourselves a pat on the back. We've been through six weeks of practicing the way. Come on, give me some, a little high round of applause. I love it. So guys, tonight we're going to continue in our series of practicing the way. Everybody say practicing the way. Practicing the way. way. But before we get started, we'll have a slide pulled up for you guys. So does anybody know who this guy is? Ronnie Coleman. Lightweight baby. Come on. This is Ronnie Coleman. This guy is a monster of a man. He's got muscles on muscles, abs on abs. He's huge, right? But, y'all listen, but he wasn't always this big, right? So the next slide is actually going to show what Ronnie Coleman looked like in high school, which he's still a pretty big guy. But, guys, the reason I show you this is because it didn't take Ronnie Coleman like a week in the weight room to get big and just get like to be his massive human being. It took time. It took going to the weight room every day over weeks, over months, over years, and spending time and then transforming himself. Maybe a little bit of steroids in there too, but he got he got big over time. It just doesn't it doesn't just happen overnight. So guys, we've been talking talking and practicing the way about all the practices of following Jesus and how we can grow with Jesus to become like Jesus and do what he did. This is reading your Bible, spending time in prayer. Spending time in Sabbath and in rest, resting with God. Confessing your sins to one another, being prayed for so that you can receive healing. Like we've been talking about all these practices, but now what do we do with them, right? We can learn about them all we want, but until we put them into play, we're not going to be transformed to be like Jesus. So today we're going to talk about crafting a rule of life. Crafting a rule of life. Everybody say crafting a rule of life. And some of y'all are probably like, what in the world does that even mean? I didn't really know either until we started getting into it. But crafting a rule of life is this, defined. Rule of life is an intentional plan for our spiritual formation. These are the habits, the disciplines, the actions we take so that God can transform us to be like Jesus. And so we're going to watch this short video real quick, and then we're going to get into it. A rule of life. A rule of life is a schedule and a set of practices and relational rhythms that create space for us to be with Jesus, become like Him, and do as He did. It's an intentional plan to slow down and simplify our life around being spiritually formed by Jesus. Rule of life is ancient language, so it can sound strange or even off-putting to our modern ears. But notice, it's rule of life singular, not rules for life, plural. The original Latin word used by our spiritual ancestors was regula, where we get English words like regular and regulation, as well as rule and ruler, because it literally means a straight piece of wood. Some scholars believe it was the word used in the ancient Mediterranean for a trellis in a vineyard. In John 15, Jesus gave his most famous teaching on spiritual formation. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory 
that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Early Christian teachers picked up on Jesus' metaphor and followed it to its logical conclusion. For a vine to bear much fruit, what does it need? A trellis, a support structure to lift it up off the ground, guide it in the desired direction, and guard it from damage, disease, and dangerous predators. In the same way, to abide in the vine and bear much fruit, apprentices of Jesus need a trellis, a support structure to guard and guide their lives into transformation. A rule of life is exactly that, a trellis. It's a way to schedule into our daily life practices and relational rhythms that align our time and our habits to our deepest desires to be with Jesus and become like him. The motivation behind a rule isn't duty, it's desire. Think of the way an athlete disciplines themselves with daily drills or a musician with daily practice. It's all in service of a deeper desire. They know we have to connect our desires to daily disciplines if we want to see them become a reality. For apprentices of Jesus, a rule of life is made up of daily practices, like beginning your day in prayer and the reading of scripture. Weekly practices, like keeping Sabbath and gathering with community, and monthly practices, like serving the poor and preaching the gospel. It's all the practices we intentionally, repeatedly do to offer our lives up to God for transformation. Put another way, a rule of life is an intentional plan for our spiritual formation. And in the chaos of modern life, with all its hurry and digital distraction and cross pressures, we need a rule more than ever before. It's an ancient idea whose time has come again. Wow. All right, so in that video, he talks a lot about trellises. We're going to talk more about that, um, the structure of our rhythms. But for now, we're going to be in our Bibles. We'll be in John chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. So everybody flip in your Bibles to John chapter 15. Verses 1 through 8. If you do not have your Bible, we'll have it follow along on the screen as well. John chapter 15. When you're there, say the Bible is true. The Bible's true. Yeah, come on. The Bible's true. John chapter 15. So, guys, right here in John chapter 15, this is this is Jesus talking to his disciples. Disciples are the ones that are following, walking with Jesus. And the cool thing about this is that if you're a follower of Jesus, you surrender your life to Jesus, you're a disciple of Jesus, which means right here in this scripture, he's talking right at you too. So this is the living word right here. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. All right, come on. John chapter 15. Everybody there? Okay, here we go. John chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. Verse 1, I am the true grapevine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit, and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit, so they will produce even more. Verse 3 says, you have already been pruned and purified by the message I have given you. Okay, real quick, I'm going to stop on verse 3. Guys, if you have given your life to Jesus, and he is the Lord and Savior of your life, and you believe that he is the Son of God, that he came down, lived a perfect life, died on the cross for your sins, buried in the tomb, was raised from the dead three days later, defeated death, then you too are purified. That's what it says right here. You're purified. All your sins of the past, present, and future wiped clean. You are pure in Jesus' eyes. That is awesome. That fires me up. That gets me excited. Come on. Verse 4. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine. And you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Real quick, fruit is like the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Come on. It's being a light in the world. That's fruit. You can produce fruit. Verse 5, yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. 
But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. And then verse 8 is powerful, guys. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. This brings great glory to my Father. So guys, if we want the vine to grow, if we're connected to Jesus, we're the branches, Jesus is the vine, then we got to build trellises, structures, for this vine to grow properly, for us to be able to grow to be like Jesus. Some of you are like, what in the world is a trellis? So we're going to have a trellis showing up. Yep. So this is a trellis. You guys ever seen one of these? It's just basically, it's a support structure for the vine to grow on. So it's usually wooden or metal bars that are in a structure for the vine to continue to grow. Because otherwise, the vine's going to grow all over the place. It's going to get tangled with other plants. It's going to grow crazy, right? So we need to build trellises, a rule of life in our life, to spend time with Jesus, structures in our everyday rhythms, so that we can become like Jesus over time. So think about it this way. we got some athletes in the room. Athletes in the room. We got people who like to draw, who like to paint. We got some artists. Yeah, come on. We got robotics guys, engineers. Yeah, come on. We got musicians, singers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So we got all sorts of different talents in here. Well, guys, listen. If you guys want to be good at something, it doesn't just happen overnight, right? You don't just learn about, hey, I. I got to pick up a guitar today and play one time, and I'm good. Now you practice, you practice every day. For me, I wanted to be a good baseball player. And so I made sure to go to the cages every day as much as I could to become a good hitter, to be a great baseball player. That doesn't mean I necessarily did every day. But I tried to go as often as I could because I knew that was going to form me into a great baseball player. Same thing if you like playing guitar. You practice every day. If you want to be an artist, you practice every day, right? You put these routines and rhythms, these structures in your everyday life so that you can grow over time. But the crazy thing is we all have trellises in our everyday lives already, whether we know it or not. And what do I mean by that? Here are some examples. For me, I wake up in the morning, I make myself a cup of coffee. I'm getting into the coffee stage, guys. It means I'm out of school. I make myself some coffee, spend some time in the Word, maybe go work out, eat breakfast, and then get the day started. Brush my teeth in the shower, obviously. But get the day started. Maybe for you, it's waking up in the morning. And first thing, you check on social media, see what's going on, see what I missed out on last night. Maybe it's spending a lot of time perfecting your sport, perfecting your talent, perfecting your craft, going to the gym, trying to get big. You're spending a lot of time there. Maybe it's just trying to stay busy all the time so you feel like you're, you're doing something, you're working hard, right? So all of these things, they're not necessarily bad things, but they're forming us over time. These are structures we have in our everyday lives that are forming us, whether we know it or not. So how do we put up trellises and craft a rule of life to be transformed, to be like Jesus, be with Jesus, and do what Jesus did? Here's the deal. It's not always about adding new habits. I know you guys are busy. You got school. You got sports. You got different things going on. You got practices. It's not always about adding new habits in there to make yourself more busy, more busy, more busy. Sometimes it's about taking some daily practices that you spend a lot of time with, maybe taking some away and replacing them with time in the Word, time in prayer, time in rest. Some examples. Maybe it's if you wake up in the morning and you spend time with social media, first thing. You spend like 15 minutes just seeing what's going on. Maybe before you do that, You get on your phone and you read the verse of the day and kind of meditate on it for a minute. And then you get on social media, right? Because that's going to help build a structure in your life. Or maybe at night, I used to do this, guys. I used to lay down in my bed and I'd start praying. Thank you, God, for this day. Thank you for everything. And then I'd fall asleep. And I'd wake up the next morning. I'm like, man, I fell asleep mid-prayer. I don't even know where I was. So maybe, maybe it's before you go to sleep, hitting your knees before you go to bed at night. 
right? Hitting your knees before you go to bed and praying. Maybe it's waking up just a little bit earlier, reading a chapter of your Bible, spending time in the Word. Maybe it's before you go to sleep, read a chapter of your Bible. Maybe it's on a Saturday, you have a busy schedule, you're, you're constantly going and going and going, and a Saturday you finally have time, so you spend time in rest with God. Guys, these are little structures, little trellises that we can put in our lives that will help transform us to be more like Jesus over time. My bad habit right now, my bad trellis, is when I, my alarm goes off, I like to hit snooze over and over and over again. Anyone else like to hit snooze over and over again? Yeah, I hit it like five times, so I end up sleeping for like 45 minutes extra than I need to. It's crazy. But here's why it's a bad thing for me. Sleep is not bad, but when I spend more time hitting snooze, I spend less time in the Word in the morning and less time in prayer. And so my habit that I need to change is waking up to my alarm and walking outside first thing, give myself a chance to wake up. And everyone's is different, guys. But look, we have note cards under your seats, and we're going to get to this later tonight. But this is my new habit. And I wrote it down. It says, wake up to alarm and go outside. I have it right here as well. Because this is my trellis to spend more time with Jesus so that I can be with Jesus, become like Jesus, and do what Jesus did. So I want to take about 60 seconds with you guys. You guys grab your note card under your chair. If you don't have a note card, look for a leader. A leader can help you find a note card. Or maybe you don't have a pen you can share with someone. I want to take the next 60 seconds for you guys to think of what is a, what is a bad habit or maybe what is a structure in your life that you can spend less time with and replace it with spending time with Jesus, okay? And I want you all to replace, I want you all to write down this new habit, this new trellis, this new routine, this new rule of life to help you in your spiritual transformation. So we're going to take about 60 seconds. Y'all go ahead, pray about it, think about it, write it down on your note card. Go, new habit. If you do not have a pen or anything, make sure to find a leader. The leader will get you one. You need a pen? About 30 more seconds, guys. 30 more seconds. About 10 more seconds, guys. 10 more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, so hopefully you guys got to write down your new habits, your new trellis that you want to put into your daily rhythms. Okay? I'm going to show you these pictures real quick. So I was writing this sermon... And I was like, okay, if I'm going to preach it, I better do it, right? So here we go. Tyler, you got me? On my slides? Okay. So this past week, I put this note card on my phone as a reminder, I'm not going to hit snooze. I'm not going to do it, okay? So look, these are the six days of the week that I took a selfie with my note card. But here's the deal, guys. I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. The first two days, I definitely hit snooze like once or twice. But that's Okay. That's okay. It's a process. Guys, the whole point of this is it takes time. It doesn't just happen overnight. These are new disciplines, new habits that we're putting in our lives. It's hard at first. It's hard at first. When I first started reading my Bible, I did not want to read my Bible for the first two weeks. But then once I kept reading, I noticed the change that it was doing in my life. I had so much more joy, so much more peace, so much more purpose. So guys, it's going to be hard. 
Day three, four, five, and six, though, yeah, we woke up. We woke up to the alarm. We went outside, spent time in the Word. It was good. So, guys, I show you this because I want to encourage y'all. The next slide. This week, as you're putting these habits and these trellises into play, I want y'all to take a selfie with your note card doing your habit, and I want you to send it in to jake.miller at thehills.org, or text me if you have my number. I want you guys to send it in. I want you guys to do these habits, put these disciplines in, and send a picture. And then next week, next week before we get started, we're going to show some different pictures of people putting their habits in their play, their trellises into play. It's going to be awesome. So I better see everybody posting pictures, taking selfies of their new trellises, becoming like Jesus. Come on. Okay, I want everyone to stand up real quick. Everyone stand up, hold your note card. All right, everybody got their note card? Everybody stand up. Here we go, guys. Listen. I'm going to pray real quick over these note cards that we're disciplined and we make this happen so we can become like Jesus and help go change the world, be a light in this world. All right? So y'all bow your heads. Y'all think about your note card. And let's pray. Lord, thank you for all these students and all these note cards of all these trellises that we're going to start putting into our lives, all these practices, so we can spend time with you, and we can become like you and do what you did, so that we can go change the world with joy, with purpose, being more like you, spending time with you. I pray over these note cards. I pray you use them, use us in this world, and we thank you most of all for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.